Amen and amen. What a joy to see you here tonight. Thank you all for coming out in-house and also uh, our friends online. We welcome you as well. We are thankful that you're all here uh, together for time for Bible study and prayer also. These are precious and important times in uh, these days and in the days of our lives. If maybe you're watching online and you're a first time guest to us or you've never connected with us, we'd love to connect with you and I encourage you to text the word welcome uh, to that number, 859-986-3444. And we'd just love to connect with you and uh, share a little bit about ourselves with you and help you in any way in your spiritual journey with Christ that we can. Well, I begin tonight by turning to Psalm 26, Psalm 26, and I will begin in verse 8 and we'll read through verse 12. Psalm 26, 8 through 12. O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Do not sweep my soul away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands are evil devices, and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I shall walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground in the great assembly. I will bless the Lord. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we rejoice that your presence is always with us. And Lord, we rejoice and find joy in knowing that. We do pray, Lord, that tonight, as we welcome your presence in our hearts and in this place, we ask, O oh God, for your mercy, that as the psalmist wrote, that we would not be swept away, our souls be swept away with sinners, nor our lives was with bloodthirsty men. Give us strength, Heavenly Father, to walk in our integrity. And Lord, finish the good work that you have started in your people and redeem us fully and wholly one day in your presence. We ask for your grace tonight as we assemble in this place to open your word, Lord, and prayerfully hide its word, your word, in our heart that we may not sin against you and build up your church. And Lord, also if there be some with us here online that needs a mighty work of the Holy Spirit done in their life, or maybe salvation or renewal and revival, Lord, that you would use your word to do that. And mighty God, as we come together, hear our singing and our prayers, place our feet on level ground, and may we bless the name of the Lord tonight, and may it be for your glory, honor, and praise. And we ask these things for the sake and the glory of the name of Jesus Christ, the name above all names. Amen. Brother Brandon, if you will, please come and lead us in worship. How's everyone doing this afternoon? It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Uh, our first hymn tonight, if you'll stand, it's going to be Tell Me the Story of Jesus.
Stop thinking about that chorus. Right on my heart, every word. Our next hymn for tonight is Heaven Came Down. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. After I'd wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling with joy, I am telling. He made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. To God's family divine, justified fully through Calvary's love. Oh, what a standing is mine! And the transaction so quickly was made when, as a sinner, I came, took of the offer of grace He did proffer. He saved me, oh, praise His dear name. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. surely endure after the passing of time I have a future in heaven for sure there in those mansions sublime and it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believe riches eternal and blessings supernal from his precious hand I receive. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away and my night was turned be seated. Oh, 
wonderful singing, wonderful hymns tonight. Again, thank you so much for being with us. And as we turn our attention to the bread of life and to the book of Proverbs, uh, as we are in our theme of Wednesday night wisdom, a study of Proverbs, and of course, there is more wisdom literature in the Bible other than Proverbs, and we might, uh, when we feel that uh, we have exhausted the themes to the best of our ability and with the Spirit's help of Proverbs, we might uh, go on looking at some of those others because we do live in a day, and we've always lived in it a day, but especially in these times, oh, how we need the Lord's wisdom, amen? Uh, hearing all the voices and seeing all this news clip and that news clip, and I've talked about it with several of you. It, it can be very uh, dizzying to say the least. Is that a word or did I just make that up? Is that a word, Jenny? Okay. And uh, God gave us another school teacher to uh, help me stay corrected. We've got a few and I'm thankful for that. <laughs> You're a math teacher. I'm really scared of you then because I was horrible in math. <laughs> oh, goodness. But uh, we do need wisdom, and I have so enjoyed looking into the book of Proverbs. Again, we're not just going verse by verse, but we're looking at themes throughout Proverbs. And uh, last week we looked at um, how we find security in, in counselors and giving advice and taking advice and how God gives people and puts them in our life uh, to give us advice at times and, uh, and to help us grow and help our decision making. Of course, we have to be careful of who those counselors and voices are. Amen. And so that's why we turn to the Word of God first and always ask the Holy Spirit to help us uh, in enlightening the Word into our soul, that we may receive it and put it into action. Of course, we spent the first many weeks just looking at the theme of wisdom in the book of Proverbs and how we need wisdom. Tonight, we look at the theme of integrity. Integrity. You see, wisdom is knowing the right path to take. And that's part of it. Wisdom is knowing the right path to take. But a lot of people know the right path to take. Doesn't mean they take it, right? And so integrity is taking that right path that God has revealed to you to walk. And that's integrity. And uh, that's what we look at tonight. And I think of the example of Job in his life that was spoken of integrity in his life. And you remember the discussion in heaven that we were privy to between God and Lucifer himself about Job. And he spoke of Job's integrity and he asked, and, and the Lord gave Satan permission to shake his life and his family was taken from him and his, many of his possessions. And then another day Satan came in before God and God commended Job. He said, you've done all this to him and he has remained to walk in his integrity. And then, uh, of course, uh, he gave Satan to touch Job's body. And after he was so sick, you remember his wife even asked him, why do you still stand in your integrity or walk in your integrity? Why not curse God and die? And Job remained in his integrity. Did he understand everything? Did he question God? Was he wrong about some things? Sure he was. But he remained in his integrity. And the book of Proverbs has quite a bit to say about integrity. Uh, you don't have to turn to this one. I'm just going to read it. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is in chapter 10. But I want us to think about kind of as we kick this off is, is one I found last night that I had originally uh, not found in this study and came across it late last night and uh, had to, to read it to you. It's Proverbs 28.6. Better is a poor man who walks in his integrity than a rich man who is crooked in his ways. And so it was for Job, and so it is for us today. We can know the right path to take, but we need integrity to take that right path. And so tonight we're going to look at uh, integrity and perversion. We're going to look a little bit as we allow the scriptures to speak into us of what integrity does for our lives 
and, and also the perversion that can come upon our lives when we reject, when we know the right path, when we see the right path, when, it has, when the light has shone upon the right path, and we choose to walk the other way and not the way of the Lord, we'll also see as the book of Proverbs and wisdom literature is so good to tell us and warn us of the destruction that comes to our lives. And we'll look at a few verses there and then we'll look at reaping the results of our character. Again, uh, we'll see the blessings of walking in integrity and we will also see the curses that come upon our lives and how they not only affect us, but also affect others around us when we do not walk in integrity. The first scripture that we look at when we start to see what integrity looks like and what it does for our life and what perversion looks like and wickedness and evil, we look at chapter 10 and verse 9 is our first scripture. And it says, whoever walks in integrity walks securely. Walks securely. So that's a blessing. That's something that happens to us when we walk with integrity. But it goes on to say, but he who makes his ways crooked will be found out. Isn't that one of the most fearful things of our sin is being found out? And even if we hide it from mankind for days, weeks, years, decades, maybe even some things our whole life, one day all will come to light before the throne. Amen? And we either stand there in Christ, in the righteousness of Christ, or we stand there naked in our sins. And oh, how we need the righteousness of Christ when that day comes, when we appear before the Lord. It's the most important decision that we'll ever make in this life of how you're going to stand before God and your righteousness or the Lord Jesus' righteousness. Uh, Gary and I had the privilege of talking to Gary a while before church. And, you know, we're reminded of through this wisdom literature, but all through the Bible, we see what happens. And we've known in our lives when we have failed uh, the terrible things at times that have come upon our life. When we have failed to walk in integrity, when the path has been put before us and we failed. And we all do fail. We all do fail. And that's why we rejoice that Jesus is the wisdom of God found in man. And he fulfills. He is the wise son of Proverbs, the only one. And that's why he was able to be the sacrifice for us. Amen? That is why he was the one true sacrificial lamb of God. And you're either going to stand before God one day covered in the righteousness of Christ by faith or stand naked in your sins. We will be, all the ways that we have made crooked will be found out. And that's why we need cleansing and forgiveness of our sins. Walking with integrity is walking with God in a relationship through his son, Jesus Christ. And in that and in only that do we truly find security. Amen. Another scripture is in chapter 13 and verse 6. Chapter 13 and verse 6. And again, I remind you, I'm not using every scripture that we could use. Uh, we would be here a lot longer. I'm just selecting a few uh, to bring the wisdom literature and God's spirit before us. Righteousness guards him whose way is blameless. So when we walk in integrity, uh, there is righteousness. And it guards our way. Now, uh, that is a beautiful thing, that the righteousness of God guards us. But it says, but sin overthrows the wicked. Sin overthrows the wicked. Some people believe that they uh, can sin and will continue in sin. And sometimes when they think, well, God hasn't struck me dead yet. Either there must not be a God or he doesn't really care what I'm doing. But eventually, sin overthrows the wicked. But walking with integrity guards us. And now I ask you to go to Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28. And we're going to look at verse 18. And I love this scripture. 
Sometimes we are put in circumstances where we have to make difficult choices. Are we going to walk in integrity? Or are we going to, as the Bible says, make our ways crooked by trying to be deceitful and cover tracks and plow new roads, so to speak? And I love this because it says, whoever walks in integrity will be delivered. It might be a difficult situation of a difficult decision that you have to make that is placed before you. But when you choose to walk with integrity and make decisions of integrity, you will be delivered. It might be hard at that time. And we'll look at another verse here in just a few moments that uh, will show the world will not understand you when you walk in integrity. I read the story, and I, don't, I don't, don't have it before me, forgive me for that, but I read the story not long ago of a uh, high school basketball coach that was in Georgia years ago, and he led his team to the tournament that year, and not only that, but they won their tournament. It was a few weeks later they found out that one of their players was not truly an eligible player by some of the rules. That player played 45 seconds of one game, he was not even an impact player, so to speak. But that coach, in his integrity, called and reported to himself. They took the title away from them that year because they had an ineligible player. And they, many of the, the community asked, you know, why would you do that? 45 seconds. It wasn't even one of our main players. And he said, if I don't have my integrity, I don't have anything. And how true that is. There's tough decisions in our life to walk in integrity. There are many of us right now, each day really, we're faced with the choice of am I going to walk in integrity or not? Uh, or am I going to follow the ways of the world? In chapter 28, verse 18, whoever walks in integrity will be delivered, but he who is crooked in his ways will suddenly fall. Doesn't mean he'll immediately fall. But there's going to come a time, whether it's in this life or whether it's in the next, where there is a sudden fall to the person who rejects God's path and righteousness and the way of integrity. And so we see the Bible is clear to us on the blessings that come when we choose integrity. Remember, wisdom is knowing the right path to take. It doesn't mean you're going to take it. Will we trust the Lord? And we spent a couple of weeks in trusting the Lord with our decisions and leaving the consequences to him even when they are difficult. But integrity is taking the path, the right choice, doing God, things God's way, trusting him with our life and walking in integrity. And so now let's look at reaping the results of our character. And again, we'll see positive uh, instances and we'll see negative ones as well so let's go back to Proverbs 3 chapter 3 and verses 33 through 35 Proverbs 3 33 through 35 the Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked but he blesses the dwelling of the righteous toward the scorners he is scornful but to the humble, he gives favor. That word favor in the Hebrew also means grace. The wise will inherit honor, but fools get disgrace. And so we see that we will reap what we sow. We reap the results of our character. And either we have the Lord's blessing on our house or we have the Lord's curses on our house. Again, sometimes we look at life and we say, well, this person is a wicked pe person and he, uh, he or she is mean and wicked and always stirring up uh, trouble and is scornful and prideful. But we must always trust the Lord in his timing. And we must understand that eventually in the end, the curse is on the house of the wicked, but his blessings on the dwelling of the righteous. And so toward the scorner, he is scornful, but to the humble, we find grace. When we humble our lives before him, in humility, we trust him with our lives. And so now look in Proverbs chapter 11, chapter 11 and verse 21. Now again, this is one of the scriptures that I referred to earlier, uh, just a minute or two ago, that sometimes we look at life and all of the wickedness, 
And even the things that are started with good intentions. You know, we people ruin everything, right? We do, whatever it is. And you can see that all throughout biblical history and history as well. Even things that were started with good intentions, organizations or ministries, uh, if we're not careful uh, and we don't walk in integrity, well, we come to a mighty fall and everything is poisoned. It's happened to many a church when we are not careful. It's happened to many a Christian as well. And also we see it throughout the world. Be assured, an evil person will not go unpunished. And I say that to not only we who are here in house tonight, but also online. You might be thinking, ah, the wicked don't get punished. They don't get what they deserve. But God's word says, be assured, an evil person will not go unpunished. One day, God will judge righteously all people and all things and make all things new. And we can be assured of that by faith. And we have to trust God with that and not try to bring vengeance upon that person or those people, but trust God with vengeance. He is the only one truly capable of bringing that upon a wicked and evil person. But be assured, an evil person will not go unpunished. But the offspring of the righteous will be delivered. Now, that's really a beautiful statement, isn't it? That not only when we choose to walk in our integrity, when we choose to walk the path of wisdom, when we choose to trust God with our life and leave the consequences to him, that not only does it bless us, not only does it deliver us, but many, much of our offspring are delivered when they look upon our faith. Now remember, wisdom literature is not necessarily uh, promises that God fulfills in all things. So yes, there have been some beautiful, godly men and women that some of their children did not choose their way. But I'm going to say this, that further brings condemnation upon them. When they know their parents love the Lord, and when they know their parents or their grandparents serve the Lord faithfully, it actually brings more condemnation upon them when they know they are not walking in the way. Now, although these are not absolute promises, they are principles and things that happen a lot of times. Uh, the offspring of the righteous will be delivered. And so that is a principle of life that many of you all have seen because you all maybe raised your children in hearing the gospel. And not only at church, but you took that responsibility to share the gospel with them in your home. And they watched you walk with integrity. And because of your walk, uh, it can change the course of generations behind you. Your walk, our walk today, those here, those watching, our choices of integrity to walk the path of God with the help of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, can deliver much of our offspring. As a matter of fact, beloved, we're seeing the opposite of that happening in our land today. For the last many decades, many did not walk with integrity. And now they're claiming that this generation that my daughter's age is in, as you've heard me say before, Christianity is saying it could be the darkest generation to ever walk upon American soil. And what they mean by that is, doesn't mean they're not talented, doesn't mean they're not beautiful, doesn't mean they're not precious, none of that. But when a Christian says that, it's speaking of they have no understanding of the gospel in Jesus Christ. And we're seeing that now. And in our land, we're reaping the benefits of that. We truly are. If you turn to Christ now, you might say, well, I didn't raise my children in church like I should have. Can I say, God always allows new starts, amen? amen? And wherever you're at right now, you see the wisdom before you. You see the right path to walk. If you'll choose to walk it, and whatever time you have left, and share with your children and your grandchildren, and be honest about your life, and be truthful about what Jesus Christ can do in your life, and no matter what age you are, no matter what you've done, you can still make an impact in your offspring. 
and in your offspring's offspring. And so, let's continue on looking at that. Were we in chapter, uh, we were in chapter 11, so let's go to verse 30 and 31. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and whoever captures souls is wise. Amen. And so there again, a wonderful blessing for those who choose integrity. It's a tree of life, not only for you, but it is a tree of life for others to come up and to feast upon and to be fed upon and to find nourishment. And whoever captures souls, in other words, whoever wins souls to walk on uh, the narrow path that God has set before us is wise. They reach souls for Jesus Christ. In verse 31, if the righteous is repaid on earth, how much more the wicked and the sinner? How much more will they be repaid for their wicked ways throughout all of eternity? And just a couple more. Let's go to chapter 21. Chapter 21. I'm turning with you as well. And let's look verse, first at verse 16. Another, this is a, a staunch warning to us in 2116. One who wanders from the way of good sense. I got to say, Brother Charles, what does the King James say there for good sense? Yeah. Who wanders away from the way of understanding. Uh, and the ESV just says good sense, understanding, good sense. Uh, blessed, isn't that something missing from our day to day is just good sense. Under, an understanding of how life works. And that the decisions we make have consequences. Um, one who wanders from the way of good sense will rest in the assembly of of the dead. Now, beloved, that's not only an eternal judgment, but that means not having true life when you leave the way of good sense. And sometimes I'm so amazed, first at myself, and then uh, our world, our nation, of how just some things that seem to be such common sense, people totally walk the other way. And I want to tell you, you bring death upon yourself when you do that. When you leave the way of good sense, that God, even to an unbeliever, has given a conscience in their life. And when you ignore that conscience and sear it, it becomes hard. And, and it just brings death when you do not walk in the way of integrity, in the way of good sense. Uh, you know, we've heard the statement, when, or I've, it's been a long time, older generations said this, that you, many of you all will remember it, but sometimes I've heard people ask, uh, as a matter of fact, I think I was asked that a couple times when I was a young man, didn't your mama teach you any better, you know? And mama did. Sometimes I just chose to not walk in good sense, and uh, sometimes we still struggle with that, amen? <laughs> but uh, my goodness, how we need an understanding of the way of life in our world today and understanding. Uh, also, we look at verse uh, in chapter 21, verse 21. Whoever pursues righteousness and kindness will find life, righteousness, and honor. I love that. What, what a beautiful principle for life for us all to cherish and hold on to tonight. That whoever pursues righteousness, goodness, integrity, holiness, and I love that, and kindness will find life. You'll experience joy here and you'll find eternal life through Jesus Christ. But you will find life, righteousness, and honor as well. Doesn't mean everyone will honor you, but you will find honor from some in this life, those who, whom it may be the most important to honor you. You don't need everybody to honor you, amen? We don't need everybody to honor us. As a matter of fact, if the world is honoring us all the time, we might not be walking in the way of wisdom. 
but uh, you will find honor from those whom is it, important, it is important to find honor from. And, of course, you find honor from God. And as uh, Peter and the disciples said in the books of, book of Acts, as they were preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, we must please God first above mankind. And the last scripture we look at tonight is in chapter 26 and verse 27. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it, and a stone will come back on him who starts it rolling. What a truth. Those who are always seeking to dig pits eventually will fall into them. And if you start a stone to roll upon somebody else, there's going to come a time where you lose control of it. And that stone's going to come back and crush you and destroy your life in many ways. Integrity or lack of it will always be found out. And so tonight we think of wisdom, yes, is knowing the right path to take. Many of us know the right path to take. But integrity is choosing it daily to walk in it. I ask just a couple of questions as we think about this and come to a close of this study tonight. What is your greatest area of temptation to cheat on integrity? Don't answer that out loud. That is for all of us to think about. What is our greatest area of temptation to cheat on integrity? And we all have different triggers, right? Some of them are the same, but uh, um, a lot of them are different. And then this question, what can you do to strengthen that area of your life? So think about what area of temptation is the greatest weak point, if you will, that will cause you to cheat on integrity when those decisions come upon your life. And the reason we need to answer that question now is you have to think about that ahead of time and you have to know that ahead of time because when the time comes and you're in the big decision or the circumstances hit you, it's much easier to fall into the way of the crooked and start making paths of our own. And so what can we do to strengthen that area in your life? Well, one, and first and foremost, we understand that we're all sinners in need of a savior. And we, none of us here or listening can walk in the way that we're supposed to all the time. And that's why we needed a savior. And so first and foremost, we give our hearts and life to Jesus Christ and welcome him into our life. And we're given the Holy Spirit to help us and give us strength to pray to pray and ask the Lord for strength and wisdom in the day of trouble, in the day of decision. We continue to feast upon the word of God daily in our life. And that word is alive unto us. It's a living word, able to cut sharper than any two-edged sword, on down deep into the deepest parts of our soul. And so we stay in the word and we pray and we have the Holy Spirit in our life. But I would also say this. And find brothers and sisters who can give you wise counsel, who can listen to you, who can encourage you. And that is what the church is supposed to be about. Amen? Amen. Is that we're together and that we understand we need each other to give us strength and help. We cannot be too prideful to think, I don't need that person's help or this person's help. Because that's not true. Oswald Chambers, I be believe, what was the name of his famous devotion? It just escaped me. Um, my utmost for his highest, thank you. And he said this, it is never do, do with the Lord, but be, be, and he will do through you. And so we all, you know, some might my question, what do you mean it's not do, do? We're supposed to do good works, right? And, and yes, a genuine faith produces true works. And a, 
And a faith without works, James tells us, is a dead faith. And so, but there are many people who claim Christianity, and even we who understand grace can get caught into it. We know we're saved by grace, and then we think we have to do everything to prove to God our worth. We were never worthy. We're saved by grace and through faith. That's why he sent Jesus, and because he loved us even in our sin while we were still yet sinners. And so first, we must be the person that God's called us to be, who God desires us to be, and he desires us all to be saved tonight. And then he wants to work as, that, as the Holy Spirit comes in our life and we're regenerated, and he starts a new work in our heart. He wants us to be that person that he has created us to be and saved us to be. And then when we are that person and we're walking in integrity and walking in the ways of the Lord with his help and with his strength, then he does wonderful work through our life. And that's what he desires to do. And then fruit is produced through our life. We, our life becomes, if you will, as the proverb said, a tree of life for others to look in upon and behold its beauty and to feast off of it, off of it as well. And again, I go back and think of that scripture where then our offspring might find rescue from this troubled world themselves. May the Lord bless our time tonight. Amen. May he bring fruit from this study in our lives. May he do a new work and revive our hearts. May he give us strength to walk in integrity in our life. Let's pray. Father, first, we ask for your forgiveness. First, for me, where I have failed to walk with integrity. And I pray, Lord, for your grace. And I pray, Lord, for your cleansing. And Lord, we ask that you forgive us of our sins, those who are praying with me right now. And we are thankful, Lord, that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, the one true man, full of perfect integrity, righteousness, and holiness. It is disheartening to think, Lord, that you sent your holiness, your presence, and put on our flesh and walked among us. The most beautiful man to ever walk upon the earth, the most truthful, the most honest, the most genuine, the most pure, the most, most holy, and we hung him upon a cross. But we are thankful for that sacrifice, Lord. And first, Lord, I would pray that tonight that you would begin a new work in our hearts. And Lord, we need your help to walk in this day with integrity. And so, Lord, guide us with your spirit. Hear our prayers, Lord Jesus, and rescue us from these perilous times. Give us wisdom in our dealings with our family and with our friends and nation as well. Lord, oh, how we need your healing. We understand, Lord, that though you are working in ways that we cannot even comprehend, you still do that work through your people and so, Lord, raise up people, people of integrity, honesty, morals, and values, Lord, that have seemed to leave our land in many ways. We're not feeling sorry for ourselves uh, like Elijah, Lord. We know we're not uh, all on our own, but you have others ready to fight, ready to stand up. And so, God, we ask that you do that. And just help us to be faithful, and to share your love, and to share your word, and to share your grace with others. And Lord, we pray for the leaders of our land tonight, for guidance and wisdom and help and strength. We pray, Lord, for the ones that are devising evil and walking upon crooked ways. Lord, first of all, that you would convict their hearts with the Holy Spirit as the gospel goes forth. And God, that you would save them and rescue them to the Christian who has lost their way, who has been swept away by all of the voices in our land and our world. 
Bring them back home, Lord. Bring them back home to the fold and use them mightily for your kingdom. We trust you, Lord. Even the world might reject us for walking with integrity. We know that you will reward us, Lord. So help us, God. May it be of your strength or else we fall. In Jesus' name, and all of his children said, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us online. If you need to um, help or prayer or to talk with someone, you can always uh, text two words, next step. What's my next step? Two words, next step, to 859-986-3444. If you have a prayer concern, uh, always let us know that. There are several ways to reach us through our website, through Facebook, and and uh, just there's several ways that you can find in today's time to reach us. That's a wonderful way, and we'll get your prayer request, and we'll answer uh, your text as quickly as we are able and help you in your journey. But may the Lord bless our time tonight and be praying for this Sunday's services as we begin a new series called The Search, The Search. And uh, kind of the, the thought behind that is as so many search for meaning and purpose in life, we find that there's a God who is searching for us first and has been since the beginning of time. And so be praying for that. Come on out at 9 or 11 in-house, or we'll also continue to be on Facebook Live at 11 o'clock. Later, that will be put on YouTube and our uh, website as well. So may the Lord bless you, and thank you for being with us.